Get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day. 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, it's a great newsletter on Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go to newsletters. You're going to see Mastering Probability right on the right-hand side. You just hit subscribe. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you can get it for one year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. Okay, You have everything to win, zero to lose. Steve has a huge amount of archives on there. Really get you to understand how he looks at the market each and every day. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? <laughs> just uh, just trying to overcome my golf withdrawal after a, a full weekend of the uh, British Open and nonstop uh, golf out there. I'm an early riser, so uh, and it started broadcasting on the uh, on the television stations at about four o'clock in the morning. So it was great to have something to do early in the morning out there. And it was what, a great tournament. Was great it, tournament. Was it amazing or what that you know? that Cameron could yes, do what Cameron's he did. Great. If you didn't see this, folks, okay? And it wow. was a shame because Rory missed so many of those by you know, like nothing for those birdies, right? It was like... Yes. I think the, 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 the interesting thing is if you played golf long enough, you know that one day you show up yeah. and it's like you... you and, and, and really at the British Open, it really is all about putting. I mean, each of these guys have got good long games and, yeah. and the ability to get the ball up there to hit a wedge into the uh, into the greens. So it really boils down to the uh, putting uh, on, on, in almost all the golf tournaments. The, the winner is usually the number one or number two position out there. But if you played golf long enough, it's, it's you know, you can show up on a Saturday and it's like you can't miss a putt. Right. Even your putts that you think aren't going to go in, go in. And then you have those days where you just can't sink a darn thing. And I it's know. interesting to see that that also happens with the pros too. Right. You know, and, and, and Rory was uh, was a perfect example of that. Uh, Victor Hovland, he's, he's one of the guys that's a really rising star. Yeah, Great he's only young 25, player. I guess. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. yeah. And it just, uh, you know, I really thought that he might be the one that would uh, pull it off. Right. But again, they're under a ton of pressure, you know, on a Sunday, even though they might say, you know, they can handle it. They're still under, uh, under pressure. So it's kind of fun to watch the pros when they're playing a difficult course like that it kind of brings you know they, they even duff some shots out there oh it was amazing um, watching and how about the guy that came in second no one's even talking about him cameron's partner the whole time and then Cam all of a sudden Young. he comes yeah. in second right yeah yeah, well, through on uh, at at after the uh, after the midpoint on Saturday, he was the one that uh, was in the lead, and and then on on, uh, on the, through Friday, and then on Saturday he had one of his putting days where where nothing would go in wow. out there. So it's it's just really you know kind of interesting. And but that Cam Smith guy, I mean, he is uh, he he's he's just a. Uh, He's a great player. No you, doubt you about know it. what? You know what I was going to say, and I forgot the name of it. I was going to say, "Where's your mullet?" I was. I, mean, I forgot <laughs> what I, I forgot what it was called when I was coming on because that's why. Yeah. Because folks, you got to see this. I mean, when you think of golf, I, I could even think of golf twenty years ago. I remember when, whether it was John Daly or Sergio Garcia, they come on with the bright clothes and all that. When you yeah. first see this guy, he's got a huge mullet, and hey, guess what? Doesn't matter what you look like, folks. It matters whether you win or lose. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. That's for sure. I'll, I'll be disappointed if he uh, if he ends up Camp Smith if he ends up going over to the Live Tour out there. Um, you know, so hopefully he hopefully he stays. I know there's some rumors about that being one possibility, but hopefully he stays on the uh, PGA yeah. Tour. You know, and so so hey, this chart here that uh, okay. you and I have looked at this uh, numerous times out here for those folks that are just listening in. This is a midterm seasonal chart pattern for the S&P 500. And this takes a look at the uh, last uh, 72 years. The red uh, vertical line that you see out there represents where we're at today. And in essence, the the way that I would take a look at this chart, it really tells me that if we follow along this pattern, that we're really in a consolidating type of a pattern that could easily last through the early part of October out here. So that's what this chart uh, tells us. If we go ahead and expand out and take a look at the bottom of this chart here, it also shows us what the average return by day is from a percentage standpoint, as well as what the average return for this time period for these uh, for the midterm uh, uh, election years by month out there. So if we if we blow that up and take a look at it, and this again, this S&P 500, seasonally, February was supposed to be an up month. And uh, May was 
uh, supposed to be a, a down month. So those are only two months that didn't tie out to be exact. So four out of the six seem to be following along the uh, path out here. If we go take a look at the NDX 100, though, uh, and as you pointed out, the, you, you said the SMHs can drive the market higher, drive the market lower. We put the NDX 100 in that same category out here. And this is the scary thing. That red vertical line is – so let's take a look at the NDX 100 over the last 36 years. And again, that red line identifies where we're at right now. And this suggests that we should see a market that moves lower into the uh, uh, end of July, early part of August, before we get any kind of a significant rally out there. So that's what this average pattern shows us. Like the S&P 500, February was supposed to generate a positive, take a look over here on the left-hand side, was supposed to produce a, a positive month that didn't, it was slightly negative. But otherwise, everything else here is uh, really tracking right online. And we can see that July, uh, July and August are supposed to be down months as uh, well. Obviously, right now, we're off to a month to the upside. Yes, I agree with you. We see a bottom out there. But again, just take a look at the seasonal pattern. It does say that we need to really uh, focus on the, uh, on, in my opinion, we need to focus on the NQ. And if we take a look at what it did today, so this is a picture from maybe about a half an hour ago. Yes. What price was able to do, this rally, Tom, took us right up into the bottom of its uh, profile at 12,197. Right. It got, it was maybe within about 10 points of that, and then it backed off. I believe it was some of the news on Apple that had us back off there. But, uh, um, it, it, it hit resistance. And when I take a look at a seasonal chart, you know, I'm like, huh, what, what, what's going on? I here? listen every time it's hitting it. I know what you're saying, man. Even I listened to your show today. I know. Right? Yeah. There's no doubt. I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what this could potentially could bring into play here, because if you can't bust them to the upside, outside, yeah. upside you know, you try to bust them to the downside, as you pointed out, you know, towards the end of last week. We couldn't bust them the downside, so it's going to try to bust them the upside. Well, where is that upside? Where is that resistance? Well, from a profile standpoint, it's at that 12,197 area. So if we do see a, a market that moves lower, um, then we're looking at maybe about the 11,630 uh, 11, area, which is these rising trend lines. So those would be the next targets if we do see a pullback. So um, I got that kind of screwed up here. So the number one weighted instrument in the NDX 100, everybody knows, is Apple. And again, this was a snapshot from maybe about a half an hour ago. And what Apple might be doing today is completing a, a sell the D point or a Gartley sell pattern. And that would be a, on the assumption that it goes ahead and produces a bearish and a bearish reversal candle. Right now, it was a bearish engulfing candle. Uh, and it needs to do that by 4 o'clock today. The interesting thing here, though, is even though we've got this potential sell the D point or Gartley sell pattern, what price has also done is pulled back and tested the top of its daily profile, which is 147. 55. So that is a key level of support. I don't know where it's trading right now, Tom. 147.60. Is it as long yeah. as price holds 147.55, even with the topping signal, I consider that to be a neutral sign. But if price does close below 147.55, it suggests a further uh, pullback out here, and that further pullback could easily be about 143 or so. So uh, we're just in a market that we could see a lot of this. It's a great day trader's market. I don't know that it's a great investor's market. No, back yet. and forth, no doubt. Yeah, and that's absolutely. it, folks. Real easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You'll see going to newsletters. You hit Mastering Probability on the right-hand side. You are off to the races. Steve, Thanks, have a Tom. great one. Safe one. Look forward to show tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. <laughs>